Hello everybody, um, welcome back to episode 5 of Marvel's Most Powerful Characters Ever. So there are a number of different characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but only a few of them have managed to get this far on the list. We're, we're approaching our top 50, really. So, come, anyways, coming in at number 59, we've got Janice Vell. Uh, Janice Vell is Photon. Now, Janice Vell is... He's, he's been Captain Marvel before, um, his, the only reason why he's getting such a high value on this list, really, is that, well, he has, originally, he is a, like, a Kree warrior, he had the Nega Bands, which, uh, grant you vast powers, he had cosmic awareness, things like that, but in his most powerful incarnation, which is Photon, it was theorised that Genis Vell, as Photon, could control every single Photon. Now, that means all light and every electron, every bit of energy in the universe, they could control. And that's the only reason why I'm putting them so high up on here. So that's Janice Vell as Photon. So coming in next are, I've got Rubik and the Shaper of Worlds. Now, these two guys are pretty simply put two sentient cosmic cubes. Now, uh, we're getting into the, probably the power levels of around one cosmic cube plus. Now, Shaper was a cosmic cube that uh, I believe it was taken by a scroll lord, but then it began to corrupt them, and the cosmic cube managed to like grow and become sentient. And that's literally the same with Rubik. They're two cosmic cubes that have sentient powers. Now, it's interesting how they've been played because we've seen them take on like uh, the Molecule Man and the Beyonder who are two halves of a cosmic cube and beat them, which is uncharacteristic like, but I guess you could say they're a whole cosmic cube, the other guys are only a half, so that's how it kind of works with them. But the powers of a cosmic cube, you can do whatever you want. A cosmic cube is literally a wishing box in Marvel, seconded really only to the power of the Infinity Gauntlet in terms of magical artifacts. There are a couple of others, but that, that's uh, Shaper of Worlds and Rubik. So coming in next is Alien Entity. Now, um, Alien Entity is a, such an interesting character. So um, they appeared to read Richards and explain their life story. So they were originally a mortal, but they learnt and through their knowledge, they gained pretty much omnipotent skills. And what he was searching, he was searching for the meaning of life, really. Um, and he talked to Reed Richards to try and help him try and find the meaning of life. But again, they couldn't, they couldn't find it. I know all of you guys have watched, um, what's it, the, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? You know, they're like, someone worked out the meaning of life and it came to like, what was it, like 34 or 42 or something? <laughs> um, anyways, so Alien Entity managed to, they, they still didn't find the meaning of life, but eventually... What they ended up doing, when Reed Richards couldn't help them anymore, the alien entity produced a snap with their fingers, which turned them into a universe. They made a whole universe. Now, this is powers pretty much unseen before in this list. Like, you could not have had some of the guys before here making whole universes, and he effectively became the one above all of that universe he made. So, in terms of powers, he's got, obviously, you know, I'm just, you've got to assume that they've just all got superhuman strength, speed, durability, all of that. But, as well as that, the alien entity could create universes, which is insane levels of power. And they had nigh omnipotence, um, very nearly all the knowledge in the universe as well. They were insanely smart. So, coming in at, what's this? So, that was... That was I believe this is like number 50, 56, 55, um, but is, coming in next is Lord Chaos and Master Order. Now, these are two cosmic abstracts, and as you may have guessed, Lord Chaos controls Chaos, Master Order is Order, and they are tasked with maintaining the balance between the universe. Their cosmic powers are nigh omnipotent, however, almost always limited in needing to create balance. They are um, the masters of the in-betweener who we've seen on this list before. Um, the in-betweener again had super cool powers, but Lord Chaos and Master Order kind of made him, they control him essentially. They don't control him, but you know how Galactus has a silver surfer. These guys have the in-betweener. 
So that's Lord Chaos and Master Order. In terms of their, they can um, see all the destinies of people, which is pretty cool. They can see well anyone who is out not outside the norm. So for example, there's a couple of characters like Adam Warlock and Thanos who are what's called outside the norm, meaning their fate isn't decided. So if you took let's say um, me, if you if let's say I was in the Marvel universe, my fate would be decided there like they would know exactly what happened in my life but if you took thanos or adam warlock there's no telling what these guys could do so that's why it's outside of the norm now lord chaos and master order can they have vast cosmic powers they are probably around the second tier of the cosmic pantheon of gods pretty they could be beaten by eternity definitely but if you put like galactus let's say against them galactus would lose so coming in at number 55 we have got logos now Logos was a character who appeared in all new, all different Marvel, great comic book series. It's what happened after Secret Wars. Now, Logos is the combined powers of Lord Chaos and Master Order, because when the new universe was created, when the new Marvel multiverse was created, the cosmic pantheon of gods was undecided, basically. You didn't know who was on top, you didn't know who was the lowest. So, Lord Chaos and Master Order naturally... Uh, well, what, what they were trying to do was um, Galactus, when he was reborn in this universe, were, became the life bringer. He was the opposite. He didn't. He gave life to planets. He did not take all their energy away. And Lord Chaos and Master Order didn't like this. <laughs> they thought it upset the balance and they asked the Living Tribunal about it, but the Living Tribunal still ruled that they couldn't do that. And what is so insane here, they then killed the Living Tribunal. Now... This this makes a little bit of sense if you know the origins of the Living Tribunal. So, for those of you who don't know, the way the Living Tribunal's powers work is that they must be powerful enough to overcome any magical threat in that universe. Or in the multiverse, really. Now, at this point, it was a very new multiverse, meaning not many magical threats could have really built up. Therefore, the Living Tribunal's power wasn't as high. That's why they were able to be killed. Now, Lord Chaos and Master Order, you said makes it like, why can't they change Galactus into the Devourer? Now, they couldn't do this because they were on the same level of power as Galactus, which is not usual, but when they were reborn into this new multiverse, they were. Now, they then merged, they got the in-betweener to merge them into a new being called Logos, which they were pretty cool. So, once they were this new being, they, were, they, they literally turned Galactus from a Lifebringer to a Devourer. They changed the way Galactus should work, which is pretty awesome if you think about it. So in terms of powers, these guys were man they were they were they were able to kill the Living Tribunal, but I would say it's a definitely a depowered Living Tribunal, is how you could think of it. So that was number 55. Coming in at number 54 is the Vishanti. The Vishanti are a group of not elder gods. Well they were around with the elder gods and they effectively were kind of outcasts or they escaped and they came together and they are in control of pretty much all the magic in the Marvel Universe. Now, well, a vast deal of it. Um, they're in con they are, they've made many of the artifacts that Doctor Strange draws power from. They are so powerful that like, these guys run, they literally run a contest to see who becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. Now, the Sorcerer Supreme if you think about it, these guys, literally, they they are the organisers of a contest to see who becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. And if you think about it, Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme, he's number 95 on my list here. That is not a low role if you're, if you're thinking on the grand scale of things. Now, in terms of power, the Vishanti are wildly powerful. And another reason why I put them up here, I think they look awesome. They're like a... They don't really have any true form, but they're like a tiger and a human. They look so cool. Um, but they have insane magical power, like well surpassing Doctor Strange. Insane, like huge, huge levels of power of magic. They are able to imbue people with the power of the Sorcerer Supreme. And they can, well, they can do more, but I'll go, I'll go into that later in another video. So coming in now at number 53 is the Magus. Now, you may be wondering, like, oh, why, why, is, why is the Magus up here? It's number 53, you know, that's that's pretty pretty high. But I'm talking about the Magus as we see him in Infinity War. Infinity War, the comic by Jim Stalin. So the Magus in Infinity War has the powers of five cosmic cubes. You thought one cosmic cube was powerful. No, no, no. 
The, the man has had the power of five cosmic cubes. He has all the powers, all the dark parts of Adam Warlock made into a character, really. Now, the Magus wasn't as powerful as Adam Warlock, because again, he's only half of Adam Warlock, essentially. Um, but the Magus's powers, Magus was, with these cosmic cubes, he was able to create copies of Thanos that literally could have fooled Thanos. He was able to create beings that would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos easily. In this state, Magus, with these cosmic cubes, was able to put eternity into a coma. He was able to stop eternity in his tracks. He was able to defeat Galactus with ease. That is how powerful the Magus was, as well as superhuman strength, speed, all of that. So, coming in now at number 52 is Goddess. Goddess, you thought Magus was the dark side of Adam Warlock? Goddess is the good side of Adam Warlock. Now, the only reason why I'm giving Goddess more power here is that whilst the Magus managed to have the power of five cosmic cubes in Infinity War, during Infinity Crusade, where we see the Goddess, she has eight. <laughs> it's, again, it's a little sloppy how they did this because it's unrevealed how they got these eight cosmic cubes, but we're not interested in how they got it. We're interested in how powerful they are. And the goddess is more powerful than the Magus in this turn. So they have literally got the powers of the Magus. They have all the previous powers Adam Warlock possessed before, uh, during Infinity War, um, as well as insane level, a huge amount of knowledge. In, they don't have the intimate link to the Soul Gem, the um adam warlock has but they were able to put like they were able to get the silver surfer to do what they want which is not an easy thing to do like um ultron with the soul gem couldn't get silver surfer to do what he wanted goddess could um <laughs> and they were they they were basically linked to all the good in the world they get power from the people being good where magus is gets power from people being evil so coming in at number 51 is devourer king thor this is a popular character I've got to say, this is a super cool character. Devourer King Thor came in the story of, um, oh, what was the story called? I can't remember. It was one with the, black. it was like, was it Jerry Duggan's run or Donny Keats? Yeah, it was Donny Keats' run on Thor. Now, Devourer King Thor, why is he so cool? So, Devourer King Thor is Thor as the Herald of Galactus. But what makes him interesting here is that this guy, this Cosmic King Thor was able to kill Galactus. So he had all of um, old King Thor's powers, which are Thor with bolstered powers of Odin. So Thor with all the powers of Odin bolstered up. And then, um, and then as well as that, really, he managed to kill a fully powered Galactus. Now, this is Galactus when he's literally using his ma max amount of power he has. He used... He ate, like, five specific planets with, like, the perfect amount of energy to get him to his most powerful, where he believed he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Black Winter. Well, he was wrong. <laughs> but um, Thor here, as well as the Power Cosmic, managed to kill Galactus, which doesn't make too much sense. I mean, if you think about it, like, it would be like using Odin's power to try and kill Odin. Doesn't seem to make much sense, but he manages to do it. And why is Cosmic King Thor so powerful? He killed a fully-fed Galactus, which is a incredibly difficult thing to do you could defeat galactus but it's very difficult to kill him i mean he is a tough he's an insanely tough character to kill he is so strong so that is cosmic king thor i would explain more about him but i'm trying to give these guys kind of all an equal amount of um time i'm speaking about them and cosmic king thor is so interesting i'll do a video on, on him later so anyways coming in at number 50 halfway through our list is silver surfer black now, Silver Surfer Black appeared in, um, what was it, Thanos Wins, which is an awesome storyline. Um, but it, it basically told how Thanos was one of the last living things in existence, and he ended up bringing his past self. Like, Thanos, the, my, you may reason, like, so Thanos eventually managed to defeat Silver Surfer Black, but... Why? Let me <laughs> let me tell you something about this character. Silver Surfer Black is so cool. He is worthy. He is one of the only characters we have ever seen being able to lift Thor's hammer other than Thor. And it's this awesome moment where, like, so Thanos ends up having to bring his past self back to help him defeat him. He's not strong enough. So Silver Surfer um, is worthy, and like Thanos is like, um, you know, like what took you so long? And he was like, I was working on becoming worthy. And it was so cool. Because you see him like before trying to lift Thor's hammer and he can't do it. But he literally spends like years like brute forces 
being able to lift Thor's hammer, which is so cool. So, as well as that, Silver Surfer Black controls the Annihilation Wave, which is so cool. <laughs> the Annihilation Wave, so strong. It literally wiped out every single... Um, if you put the Annihilation Wave against all non-cosmic characters, they lose. They would lose. They would lose by sheer numbers. The Annihilation Wave is so powerful, and Silver Surfer had complete control over it. Silver Surfer was able to destroy Cosmic Ghost Rider. So, Cosmic Ghost Rider was like Thanos' Herald. This was Ghost Rider, as we normally know him, imbued with the power Cosmic. So, basically, a, a very strong Herald of Galactus. Silver Surfer destroyed him. He didn't kill him. He destroyed... He basically destroyed the Spirit of Vengeance off of him. As well as this, he overpowered a singular Thanos. However, he got, like... He got monologuing and then he got backstabbed by Surtur's Twilight, which ended up killing him. But the reason why he's so powerful and the reason why he's so cool is because you have the powers of the Silver Surfer. You have cosmic powers, wildly enhanced because it's literally at the end of time and he's just been like practicing them. As well as this, he has Mjolnir. As well as this, he has the most powerful fighting force in the universe. Damn, this guy is so cool. So that is it. That's number 50. I hope you guys enjoyed that. What do you think about the list? Do you think I should change any of these? Do you think any characters who you think should be on here or any who you think will appear in the next couple of videos? Well, I'll let you pop it down in the comment section. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, there's been a lot of people promoting me on Discord, which is really kind. Um, I really encourage you to do that. It's a great way of getting things out there. So yeah, I guess please like and subscribe and share this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.